So with uh, question 10, uh, let me draw the PV diagram um, again and then go through the analysis. So even though it kind of asks this way, you know, A, what is the heat input? What is network? What is the waste heat? And what is the efficiency? Um, it's breaking the norm with the multi-part questions a little bit in the sense that one part doesn't build on the next part. You kind of have to do the entire analysis all together, and then you will have information to answer all four parts just uh, in a single, like a two minute exercise. <laughs> so, so let me do that whole analysis um, first. Does it hint say anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go through that. <laughs> so, so it says consider a heat engine cycle consisting of these processes. So let me write that out. So, um, so I like to draw a PV diagram whenever I'm analyzing thermodynamic processes because that's our main tool. So let me draw pressure volume diagram for this uh, heat engine cycle. It's telling me that it has isochoric heating, which means the vertical line going up. That's what that looks like on a PV diagram, constant volume. Adiabatic expansion, so it'll look like a curve, like a curve that's uh, uh, going to higher volume. And I, adiabatic and isothermal expansion looks very similar in terms of schematic drawing. Uh, so I'll have to express the difference in algebraic terms. And then there's isobaric contraction. So that'll look like a horizontal line going to the left. It's isobaric, constant pressure, and the volume is decreasing. So I have to put together these three processes to form a heat engine cycle. And, you know, kind of thinking of it as a jigsaw puzzle or whatever, it should look like this. Isochoric heating, adiabatic expansion, and then isobaric contraction. So, um, and the question gives me the initial state, um, just the prior to isochoric heating. It gives me the initial pressure. So let me label that as a given quantity. And it gives me initial volume. Um, oh, and it gives me the, uh, let me, I, yeah, let me call this a final uh, pressure. Uh, right after the isochoric heating, or you could call it high pressure, whatever. Um, basically, there's two values of pressure we deal with in this question, and both of them are given in the question wording. So, all right, so I have to do this analysis. And, um, and as I'm doing this analysis, and this is the question you are constantly asking and constantly answering in any thermodynamic process questions, which are what is the network done um, through that one process, or I guess just the work done, and what is the amount of heat transfer through that one process. And these two will naturally relate to the change of internal energy. So, so this is the question that you are just constantly asking at each step of the process. So let me label, the, label it one, two, three. So there's a three processes here, one to two, two to three, and three to one. At each of these steps, I'm asking this question, same question over and over. What is the change? What is the network done? What is the transfer of heat? What is the amount of work done? And as you are answering those questions, um, you have some tools that you can use. Uh, you have seen it in other videos, and I will bring that up as they are needed. So let me just get started. Uh, but so the reason I'm highlighting this is because this setup will really take a long time. It's going to, oh, maybe take more than five minutes. Um, so there will be a kind of long set of calculation before I get to answering any of these. In order for me to answer this, I have to finish that long set of calculations first. So, <laughs> so let me go through that long set of calculations. Um, I'll, yeah, before I uh, do that. So, 
So process from one to two, that's the isochoric heating. And I'm interested in these three questions, but yeah, A, B, C each time. And um, each time it's kind of easiest to answer A and C first, because it's usually easiest to find the network and change in internal energy first, and then use those pieces of information to get at uh, heat transfer. So the work done in the process one to two, that's actually simple and easy, it's zero because change in volume is zero. And any kind of amount of work done is pressure times change in volume. If your volume didn't change, your, it didn't do any work. And the change in, for the change in internal energy, this is the expression that you will be using over and over, which comes from the equipartition theorem, which is that the expression for internal energy itself is the degree of freedom over two, uh, number of molecules times Boltzmann constant times the temperature uh, in Kelvin. So the change in internal energy is all these coefficients times change in temperature. And there's a way I like to rewrite this uh, often, especially in a question like this where it looks like I haven't been given I, I haven't been given the, the number of molecules is um, to rewrite into this form using the ideal gas law. Ideal gas law says this, PV is equal to NKBT and note the similarity between this and this. So I can rewrite this expression in terms of change in the product, pressure times volume. That way I can only work with the pressure and volume information that I'm mainly working with, and I never have to go to the number of molecules or temperature. So, uh, so I have this change in, in, um, change in internal energy as this, and uh, let's see here. Um, ah, there it is monatomic ideal gas, <laughs> so that I know degree of freedom is three. Um, so yeah, this should be three halves. And um, I guess, let me just plug in the numbers here. I think I have most of the numbers um, in SI units. So the volume doesn't change. So let me factor out the volume. So three halves times the volume, the number I have times, it's gonna be change in pressure. I have both the final and the initial pressures. So let me plug that into calculator to just get a number that I'm gonna be working with from here on whenever I need it. So three halves times the volume, uh, 0.02 cubic meter, that's the basic SI unit of volume, times uh, the difference in pressures. So 650 minus 100, that's 550. 550 and it's in kilopascals, so basic SI unit, it's 10 to the power of three pascal. So that should be the change in internal, internal energy. Uh, 1.65, 1.65, uh, times 10 to the power of four joules. And finally, to get at, to get at the heat transfer, this, the relationship I will constantly be relying upon is the first law of thermodynamics, that change in the internal energy is given by net heat transfer minus the work done by the system. Or rewriting it, heat transfer, net heat transfer into the system is change in internal energy plus the work done by the system. Now, it might not be necessary for you to always use this, but it almost always works because usually calculating work and internal energy is more straightforward. So once you have those numbers, then you can easily say that, oh, heat transfer here is the same as internal energy because work done was zero. So 1.65 times 10 to the four joules. And actually when we finish the calculation, you will see that, oh, this is QH but well, leave that for the very last step here.
uh, now I have to move on to the next process. Uh, to, to, so it looks like I might go um, five to 10 minutes over because this is a tedious calculation. Sorry, I should have left more than 10 minutes for this. <laughs> um, so I think I'm gonna go five to 10 minutes uh, beyond the seven o'clock. Uh, my apologies, it is recorded and it'll be shared as recording. Um, so process from two to three, it's a bit of an odd one. Um, because it's an adiabatic expansion. And the fact that this process is adiabatic, it actually tells you one thing right away. It tells you that the heat transfer is zero. It's just, it's a, just piece of information that you have right away. Q is equal to zero. It's kind of unusual in that in almost no other process you have immediate information about Q. You usually calculate work done and change in energy and then figure out Q from there. Here, you're just given the Q. So you start out there and um, I think I was mentioning this shortcut at the last virtual class session. Uh, while it is possible for you to calculate work by doing this integral of, um, you know, infinitesimal amount of work done as pressure times dV going from some initial volume to final volume. Uh, you can do that, but it works out to be much more tedious than it has to be. So, um, so I won't do this. Uh, even though doing this is possible, I won't do that in this case. Instead, I'm going to utilize the first law of thermodynamics, this, which says if the heat transfer is zero, then there's a direct relationship between the, the change of internal energy and work done by the system. So I'm gonna try to figure out the change in internal energy and then from that, uh, get the work done by the system. So, so let me start out with that. Change in internal energy is this the same expression that we had before, uh, three halves, because it's still monatomic, times the change of pressure and volume. And here's where you actually do have to be careful. This thing that we did before, you can't do that here because this adiabatic uh, expansion process is one where both the pressure and volume changes. So you have to work with this long form, three halves times the change of the product of pressure and volume, which is P final, V final, minus P initial, V initial. Yes, all this is very tedious and there's no other shortcut around this. And looking at the, all these quantities here, I think I know most of them. I've been given, um, I've been given, so here the initial starting pressure is actually this one here, 650 uh, kilopascal, I have that. And the ending pressure, I do know it has to end at the same pressure as this one, so that isobaric contraction takes it back. So I have that here, I have both pressures. Um, I have the initial volume. That's the volume that we started out here. We haven't changed from that. So the key piece of unknown here is the final volume. And this is where you have to use the adiabatic relationship. Uh, that's what the hint was getting at here. Uh, use the adiabatic relationship to fill in any missing information. So I just have to apply that. What the adiabatic relationship tells me is that P initial, V initial raised to power gamma is equal to P final, V final raised to power gamma. And I can just solve this for V final. When I do that, I get um, V final is equal to the move P final over. So the ratio of PI over PF. Um, so times VI raised to gamma and I have to get rid of this gamma here, which means I have to take, raise this to power of one over gamma. So simplifying it, it looks like PI over PF raised to power of one over gamma times V initial, the gammas cancel out. And because it's a monatomic ideal guess, if you read about the, the adiabatic relationship, 
you know that gamma is d plus 2 over <laughs> d, not 3, d, <laughs> d plus 2 over d. Your textbook also express this in an, another phrase, like cp over cv. That's another way to do it. These two are numerically the same. Um, so in the case of um, the monatomic ideal gas, this would be 5 thirds. So we did that. Let me just work out this V final uh, numerically. I think that's going to be, that's going to involve a lot less headache than the other possibilities. So when I do that, let me see what I get. So the ratio of the initial to final pressure, initial being 650, final being 100, um, oops, equals that. Raise that to power of one over gamma. Gamma is five thirds, so that should be three fifth. Uh, that's the first factor here. Multiply that with the initial volume, zero point zero two cubic meter, equals. I get zero point zero. Uh, let me keep four significant figures just to be careful. So my V final here is zero point zero six. 149, 149 cubic meter. So, so that's the V final here. Now with that, I know every single number in this um, combination here. So let me do that on my calculator and write down the number for change of internal energy. So the number here is three half times um, the product of the final pressure and volume. So final pressure for this process is 100 kilopascal. So 100 times power of 10 to the power of 3 pascal times the final volume, which is what I just calculated, 0 0.06149 minus the initial pressure, in this case, 650 kilopascal. Oops. 650 times 10 to the power of 3 um, pascal times the volume, uh, initial volume, which was 0 0.02. Okay, so that should equal change in internal energy. And I'm really, uh, let me press equal sign to be sure I didn't forget anything. Okay, I'm relieved to see a negative sign because in the adiabatic expansion, the gas cools. The internal energy is going to go down. Yeah, that's what actually that other minus sign here was for. So, so the gas does a positive work and the change in internal energy is negative. So this should be minus 1.0, uh, let me, 0 0.03 times 10 to the 4 joules. That's the change in the internal energy. And from the relationship we highlighted before, we get the work done of 1.03 times 10 to the 4 joule uh, plus 1.03. So that's process 2 to 3. I told you this was a tedious calculation. <laughs> we got one more process, um, process um, 3 to 1. And yeah, it's just going to keeping tedious. <laughs> so let me do process three, uh, three to one. So that's going to be three to one. Um, so I'm asking the same three questions. What is the network done? What is the change in internal energy? And can I get the chain heat transfer from that? Um, so three to one, it's a contraction. So I do have to be mindful of science here. When I do the calculation of the work done, it'll be a negative quantity. And uh, one thing is simpler here in that it's an isobaric process. So the pressure doesn't change. So I can express work done as simply uh, pressure times change in volume, since this is a constant value. So uh, let me just do this on a calculator. I have the pressure already. That's uh, um, 100 kilopascal, so 100 times 10 to the power of 3 pascal times. And what I want to be careful here is the change in volume. The V final here is the, uh, the smaller volume, 0 0.02 cubic meter. 
and I subtract the initial volume, the larger volume that we found earlier, 0 0.0614. What's that, 9 or 4? That was 9. <laughs> 9. Um, yeah. I, I don't know why I have extra uh, parentheses, but that should be it. Minus... Um, uh, 149, um, I guess let me keep the same power of 10 I've been using. So this is minus 0 0.415 times 10 to the 4 joules. And minus sign makes perfect sense to me because the system is, the work is being done on the system. The system is doing negative work. Now, we have to calculate the change in internal energy. And I'm going to use the same expression that we've been using a few times so far. Um, so that's three halves times change in the, pr uh, the product of the pressure times volume and it's isobaric. So I can factor out the pressure. It's gonna be change in volume. Oh, I made this remark before. I did this calculation before it's right over there. Um, so let me, just to use the number there, and I just had to multiply by three halves. Um, so let me do that. Multiply this by three half. That gets me that number. That's gonna be my change in internal energy. Um, minus 0 0.622 times 10 to the four joule. So that's the change in internal energy. And finally, we do the, uh, the heat, net heat transfer. And that's just gonna be straight for the, this formula here. A change in internal energy plus uh, work done by the system. So let me just keep these minus signs and simply add them together. Um, so add this to the work done, um, minus 0 0.415 times 10 to the power of four. And I didn't have to enter it this way, but that's the way I want you to enter it, equals that. So the net heat transfer there. So the negative sign indicates it's a heat flow out of the system. So minus um, 1.04 times 10 to the power of four joules. So the hesitation there is uh, I'm keeping three significant figures there and I mean, it should be adequate, but it doesn't leave any margin for rounding error. So, um, okay, so that's heat transfer. And that concludes our analysis, which will now put us in the place where I can actually just answer these questions right away. So for heat input, um, having done this analysis all the way throughout, I see that there's really only one place where I have heat input, that's right here. So that is my heat input, 1.65 times 10 to the four joules, or in terms of kilojoules, that's gonna be 16.5, 16.5 kilojoule. The net work done, uh, we have to be a bit more careful here. There's actually two places where work has been done. There was um, positive work done here, process two to three, and there is negative work done here, process three to one. So I have to remember to add them, minding the signs, and to get the net work done. So oh, that I have to actually, I should do, yeah, I should just do it on a calculator. So that's gonna be um, 1.03 times 10 to the power of four minus 0 0.415 times 10 to the power of four. So, um, so 6.15 kilojoules. Hopefully that's enough. <laughs> um, what is the waste heat over one cycle? And I think I had only one place where heat was being expelled from the engine. It's right here. So I can just enter that. And I think the system expects me to enter positive answer. So let me just do that. And somehow if it gets graded as incorrect, I'll just flip the sign. Um, so 10.4 kilojoule here. And the efficiency of a heat, and as a double check, you can see that the difference between heat input and the heat output gives me the network done. So 
I feel confident about this answer. Now, efficiency of a heat engine, a net heat, uh, sorry, net work done divided by the heat input. So let me just uh, put that on the calculator, 6.15 divided by 16.5. Um, do they want it in percent terms? No, just frac um, um, uh, what, decimal. So it'll be 0 0.373, 0 0.373. And that's it. And as I keep saying, it's, it is tedious calculation. Um, it took me 25 minutes kind of explaining everything and doing everything. And, you know, it is tedious calculation. And uh, if you were to have to do this, something like this on timed assessment, um, I would ask you to, you know, try to do the calculation as quickly as you can, you know, type in your answers within the 20 minutes. And if you need to take the additional time kind of organizing your work, do do that, that is allowed. Um, but because the answer you put in during the time, the portion of the assessment does count differently, um, make sure you keep within that time. So that's all. Thank you.